Okay, everyone, uh, we're going to take a look at oligopoly. And what we have here is a marriage. And as you can see, one of the partners likes to go run errands at Lowe's, and the other partner prefers to spend time at the bookstore. And the numbers here represent the utility that each partner gets from going to each place. So they enjoy spending time together, so you get some utility no matter where you are. But the utility that they get from each place sort of depends on how much they like it. Now, in an oligopoly, you're interdependent. And so in this case, well, the marriage, you're interdependent because if one person's unhappy, that unhappiness spreads to the other. With businesses, you're interdependent because one person's decisions affect your profit and vice versa. That is really, really key for oligopoly. And what it means is you have to look at your profit based on the other partner's decision. So your first important step is to identify where each partner is on the oligopoly. And in this case, you could call it a duopoly because there are only two. Jana is the first entry across these columns. And any time that these are written, the uh, first entry is the person that is over here to the left. Jason then would be the second entry. And you can see I'm going to color code what he does here. So... Some of the questions you get asked with an oligopoly are what is, um, what is a dominant strategy? So let's take a look at how we can find a dominant strategy for Jana or if she even has one. And what a dominant strategy means is it's something she should do regardless of what Jason chooses. So what we have to do is see if Jason chooses Lowe's, what's Jana's best choice? If Jason chooses the bookstore, unlikely, what's Jana's best choice? And then we need to see um, what, what Jana should choose in light of Jason's choices. So here, we'll come over and cover up Jason's choices. And you can see that if Jason chooses Lowe's, Jana should also choose Lowe's. But if Jason chooses the bookstore, Jana should choose the bookstore. So what that means is I am totally dependent on Jason's decision to maximize my own personal happiness. And there is no dominant strategy for me. Let's see if there's a dominant strategy for Jason. So we need to look at if Jana chooses Lowe's, and we'll need to black myself out. All right, so now we're looking to see if Jason has a dominant strategy. If I choose Lowe's, then I'm going to black out my decisions. And here, if I choose Lowe's, then Jason should choose Lowe's. That sounds like it should make us the most happy, but of course we have to look at the utils here. And if I choose, if I were to choose the bookstore, then Jason should choose the bookstore. So, as you can see, neither of us have a dominant strategy. So, let's say this number over here was higher. Let's make it, say, 20. If it were 28, his 16, then he should choose Lowe's, and he would have the dominant strategy for Lowe's because no matter what I choose, his choice of Lowe's is going to maximize his happiness. In an oligopoly, you don't care about the other person's happiness. Okay, let's find Nash equilibrium. So we take a look at our Lowe's and bookstore options, and a Nash equilibrium says that both players have reached their best strategy dependent on what the other player is doing. So let's take a look at where those are. You may have more than one Nash equilibrium, and hopefully you're kind of spotting where those are probably going to be located. But let's say Jason chooses Lowe's. In that case, Jason has already chosen Lowe's right here, so we can kind of black that out so that we can see what Jana would do. And if Jason chooses Lowe's, then Jana can choose Lowe's or the bookstore. And if you see this, then if Jason chooses Lowe's, Jana would choose Lowe's. And that would mean um, because if she were to choose the bookstore, she would have a utile of 10. But with his decision of Lowe's, she's going to have a utile of 20. If Jason chooses the bookstore, Let's black out the bookstore, again, unlikely. Then Jana would choose the bookstore. And um, 
Of course, she's going to be happiest here because if she were to choose Lowe's, she would be unhappy. But we also need to check it the other way. So let's give Jana the power in decision making here. And if Jana chooses Lowe's, then Jason will choose Lowe's. And if Jana chooses the bookstore, so again, what I'm doing here is blotting out what the one person chose so that we can compare the other person's choices. If Jana chooses the bookstore, then when we compare here, Jason has a 27 noodles here at the bookstore, so he would choose the bookstore. So the Nash equilibrium is dual. Your Nash equilibrium is here. Jason chooses Lowe's, Jana chooses Lowe's, and here. If Janet chooses bookstore, Jason chooses bookstore. So these two decisions are, are the Nash equilibria for this event, and it just depends on who goes first as to what would end up be ch being chosen. So if you said Jason choose, went first and tried to decide Nash equilibrium, well, we'd take a look, and Jason is happiest going to Lowe's, and then Jana will be happiest uh, going with him. Aw, happy marriage. Similarly, if we ask what Jana would choose first, she's of course going to choose the bookstore and Jason would be happiest going with her. So that's a Nash equilibrium. Hope it helps you for the test.